So you want to take some cool action shots like these ones with your DJI Mini 2 drone, but aren't sure where to start? Well, stick around and I'll show you how. So don't go away. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel where we review tech related to making YouTube videos and other gear tips and tricks videos just like this one. So if you're liking this content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. So recently I've been using my DJI Mini 2 to take more photos than I have videos. Here's a few examples of images I've captured. I've been driving to various places not far from home, putting the drone up and seeing what I could get. I even took a few night pictures, which I reckon have come out really well. And I think I'm actually getting it down to a little bit of a fine art now. As a result, I've broken down the step-by-step -step method I use in a new video, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But I've also been working on capturing some action shots, just like these ones. So in this video, I'll show you how to do just that. And it's actually a lot easier than you think. And make sure you stick around until the end of the video where I share another great technique for getting even better detailed close-up images. So let's get into it. A few weeks ago, I took my DJI Mini 2 drone to my daughter's school camp. I went along as a parent helper and one afternoon I had some time to get the drone up and take some photos and videos for the school. They've been going to the same camp for several years and they were pretty excited at the prospect of getting some pictures from perspectives and angles that they hadn't seen before. So I managed to take a few high shots and landscapes that I thought came out pretty well. It really is cool seeing something you're familiar with, but from an aerial point of view. It's almost like you're presenting them with some sort of magic gift. People love it, and these were very well received. So when the afternoon activity started, in particular the water slide and the hydro slide, and even though it was a very windy day, I managed to manoeuvre myself through some obstacles and get some footage that the school and the students were pretty happy with. At the end of each day at camp, they'd show all the photos and videos that staff and parents had collected during the day's events. And these shots in particular got some big cheers from students as they could watch themselves and their classmates tackle the giant hydra slide. I must admit, I did take a few risks to get the shots, and it was a little nerve wracking to start with. I had the drone positioned in front of the hydra slide, set it to sports mode, and as the kids were flying out of the end of the slide, I floored the drone backwards to get some cool shots, hoping like hell it'd be fast enough to stay out of their way. Let's just say there were a few close calls, but it all worked out in the end. Once I went forward instead of up, but luckily I didn't crash into anything. In fact, the shot ended up pretty cool, although the drone did take a little bit of a soaking. Now all of the footage and pictures I was able to supply at the end of the day were lower resolution versions that the DJI Fly app automatically saved to my phone during the drone flights. I say lower resolution, but it was more than good enough to show everyone through the computer and project it onto a wall. I did some hasty edits using the DJI Fly app on my phone, and whilst it wasn't up to the quality of edits that many of us see on YouTube, it was more than good enough to show the kids at the end of the day. Now, it wasn't until I got home and downloaded the SD card onto my computer that I could really have a good look at the images and footage. When I recorded the videos on my drone, I had the quality set to 4K at 30 frames per second, and when I was able to have a look at the footage on my MacBook Pro, I was blown away at how detailed the videos actually were. That was when I had the idea of scrolling through frame by frame and then taking screenshots of some of the frames to use as photos. Now when I did this, it was just through the QuickTime Player app on the MacBook, and the images I took were just screenshots, but the quality is more than good enough to send on to other people or to post on social media. So here's the step-by-step -step process, and make sure you stick around because I'll share another technique with you so you can take your images up to a whole new level. So here's exactly what I did. I found the clip I wanted to get a few shots from, and I opened it with the QuickTime Player app. If you have a Mac, QuickTime comes automatically installed. If you have a PC and don't have QuickTime, you can actually download it for free and install it on your Windows PC. I'll put a download link in the description below. Or you can use any other app to play the clip, like Windows Media Player, for example. Now when I got to around the part of the clip I wanted, I paused it, and then used the right and left arrow keys to scroll through, forward or back, a frame at a time, until I found the frame that I wanted to capture. Then I pressed Shift Command 5, and this allows you to capture an image of a particular window you have open, in this case the QuickTime app window, clicked on that window, and the image was then saved to the desktop. I just kept going through and doing that to capture any image that I wanted until I had been through all of my footage and found all the images I was keen to turn into 
photos. Then all you have to do is open up the image in your editing software of your choice. In my case, it was Adobe Lightroom, but there are free photo editing apps available online and crop it to the right dimensions. In my case, I wanted to post on Instagram stories, so I needed the image to be nine by 16 and the job was done. Now, depending on the software you have, you can go in and do a bit of editing, color grading, that sort of thing, or you can use the free filters that the likes of Instagram and Facebook provide anyway. So how simple is that? Record the action by video instead of trying to capture one image at a time and hoping for the best. Too easy. And now for another tip that will enable you to take this technique up to a whole new level and get even more detailed images. But before I share that, I just wanted to say thanks for sticking with the video this far. And if you found this technique helpful, it'd be great if you could hit that thumbs up button below. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thanks guys. I really appreciate your support. And now on to my pro tip. Now, because the footage was captured in 4K, there is actually a lot more detail available to use if you wanted to. So if you did want to zoom in and capture an even greater close up, my suggestion would be to open it up in your video editing software and use that program to zoom in. Since the footage is 4K, you'll be able to open up the image by quite some margin and then either screenshot that or capture that frame using the editing software itself. I mentioned earlier that I've been using the Mini 2 drone to take some pretty cool images like landscapes or just unique angles of areas near home that people are familiar with. Now, if you've tried that but are disappointed with the results, it's likely because you've just taken one photo and tried to work with that. But that's not enough. You need to take a lot more to capture more of the action and then crop in from there. I know it sounds complicated, but I've made a video explaining how to do it in simple, easy steps. In fact, many of these steps you only have to do one time and never have to change the settings again. So click the link on the screen now and I'll see you over there. Thanks guys.